Howdy everyone, it's me once again, the one and only Killer Rodan. And today, as you can see, I'm still continuing my Disney movie marathon, where I'll be talking about the movies, of course, TV shows, merchandising, I don't know, whatever the case may be, if it's related to Disney in one way or another, in some shape or another, then granted, yes, I'll be talking about it, of course. So I just want to talk about this something real quick, because it, it came to my attention. I mean, it's something I've noticed, really, but it's just utterly stupid. It's, it's just typical dumbassery. I've, I've been here, and uh, can I have one day where I don't complain about something? I mean, really? Anyway. Yeah, to be more specific here, this is in something in comics. Of course, the X-Men comics, of course. And more specifically, I know this is in reference more of the the one animated show, really, but I'm just referring to comics just to re reference to literally everything to, that's related to X-Men. I know this controversy is more in relation to the TV show, the one popular TV show. We all know what TV show that is, the really popular X-Men TV show from the 90s. That was really popular. But what I'm going to say here, that's a counter-criticism, is, is a reference to all the X-Men stuff. I'll, I'll explain more in a minute, folks, in just a moment. Be, because it's just... Christ, I don't know. It's not towards the show, okay? Don't get me wrong. It's not towards the show itself. That even though it does involve the show in some ways when you think about it. But I know the movies themselves were pretty popular. And yes, I know the movie, the franchise have, have been rather wonky in some ways. I guess that's an understatement. But yes, I know Days of Future Past has been said to be one of the one of the better X-Men movies, which, yes, I real agree. It's, it's a fantastic movie. Yes, I, it, it was. definitely was. I, my personal favorite, of course, have to be the one with the, uh, yeah, the one with the perfect guy. Not a popular opinion, I know, but I'm not the one to follow public opinions, that is. I know a lot of people hated that one, really, but Percy Spring, I didn't, I didn't think it deserved that, all that hate, just clearing that out there. Um, my point is, what I'm about to say is, is that it's not going to really follow a popular opinion. I know a lot of people were just attacking Disney. Oh no, it's gone woke. It's gone woke. It's gone woke. Oh no, it's gone woke. Shut up. Because it, guess what? It was always woke. It was always there. It was already there. Ever since, even, even before Disney did the thing, whatever that thing is, I know Disney has been receiving a huge backlash for whatever absurd reason. But anyway, that's why I was, I was just trying to say anything in relations to X-Men. Let's just look at what Stan Lee did. Stan Lee actually took the sorcerer issues from way back when and just added to the X-Men. Because case in point, like the sorcerer issues, the social rights allegory, which was introduced in 1963, the X-Men were this team of teenage mutants led by Professor X, and they fought super criminals and other mutants, of course, including Magneto, who pretty much sought out the destruction of humanity. So, of course, is that Dr. Xavier was just trying to show that don't be as bad as bigots. They're just flawed like everyone else. I mean, yes, they're making mistakes, bigots are making mistakes, but don't be as bad as they are. And so, you know the whole thing with two wrongs don't make a right, you know, all, all that jazz. So of course it's a whole of course it's the whole thing with how African Americans would be treated just because they were they had darker skin, which yes in itself is pretty stupid. You can't just turn hate somebody for being a different color. Of course this goes through uh, and then there's a whole thing with including gay representation. Yes, they could also use that as a way for the X Men too, because gay people are viewed as outcasts, unfortunately. Same thing with lesbians. Bisexuals, people who are trans, so yada yada yada. All that judge, you get the point here. This was already a thing. This this whole stick was already like racial injustice and all that, racial inequality or whatever you can call it. That was that was already a thing. That was already a thing in the comics. That was always been a thing. So it, it was already woke. It was already enlightened. That was always there. It was always there. And I know that some people are trying to say, oh, Dizzy's doing this, or Dizzy's doing that. It was just nonsensical when you think about it, because not every comic of X-Men was good. Unfortunately, this goes for DC, this goes for Marvel, this goes for anybody. Like, this goes for Superman, Batman, you name it. Spider-Man, Wonder Woman. Some of the comics are going to be bad, especially if you have a long, long-running series. Of course, eventually, you're going to make a shitty comic. It happens. 
Maybe they just got overly confident, perhaps, which, yes, of course. So it happens to all the characters, not just the X-Men, but... And I'm not trying to come off like, oh, I'm just, what do you call it, a meat writer of... Oh, you're just a big fan. Let's, let's play him a nostalgia. But, you know, okay, so I guess that, I'll get back to that in just a second. But anyway, this could happen to any characters. It could be the Spider-Man. I know a lot of people absolutely positively hated the Spider-Man Clone Saga. The Clone Saga was what was viewed as one of the worst runs of the Spider-Man stuff. Understandably so, because it was terrible. And you know that Spider-Man is one of the most beloved characters in comic book history. And understandably so. But even he, he, even he's not immune to shitty comics, unfortunately. Same thing with Wonder Woman, Supergirl, Power Girl, Superman. You know, the DC char line characters, the, their line, even, even, they're not immune to com shitty comics. It, it happens, unfortunately. There you go, it happens. But just pointing that out, I'm not trying to be like, oh, I'm just trying to be so defensive of the comics. I'm just trying to point out that a lot of people are just being spreading just misinformation, I guess you can say, because this was always a thing. It was already there. So I just don't get it. I don't, of course, social issues has always been a thing and thought provoking throughout the series, of course. And that's fine, of course, when you think about it. So I know that another kind of twist is that the mutants are hated by the very people who they defend, or the irony of it. So, of course, this is supposed to be like a mirror to the real-life struggles when it comes to the civil rights movement in the 1960s. So, yeah, that was definitely a 1960s thing, of course. And, yeah, so there's also, there's also a whole thing where, like, the movies don't exactly represent what the comics are doing. Yes, that's like a whole thing, too, of course. Which I don't want to get to. I'm just throwing that out there. Yes, I do realize a lot of people have criticized the movies themselves for not being 100% accurate to the comics. Which, yeah, it's going to be an argument to me there, sure. But anyway, moreover is that, just, this is just ridiculous. When think. Stan Lee, when he, did, when he was working on the X-Men, they were actually inspired by real-life events. So it's, it goes to something I've said before quite a few times before, is that sometimes the best parts of fiction have some truth in it. So I don't understand as to how people are just really getting really uppity about this. Like, why do you why do you find this an issue all of a sudden? I, I don't get it. it just, I just find it oddly confusing that this this is a thing. Why? I don't understand why this is a thing. I don't get it. I just, I don't know, I just find it oddly confusing, really, if we balance it. I find it, I find it really weird. <sighs> but yeah, I mean, I don't want to keep this video too long. I know these types of videos can be pretty lengthy, really. This, this whole political stuff, it, it was always there. I mean, yes, there should be more to the characters than their struggle, yes. There should be more to the characters than their sexual orientation, yes. There should be more to the characters than, the, than their gender identity, of course. There should be more to the characters than whatever country they came from, of course. So, of course, you do have to treat these characters as, pe as people, as characters, as three-dimensional characters. Yeah, that's, that's, that's how I should say it, as three-dimensional characters. There should be more to them than just this, 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 than ABC. There should not be just checkboxes for diversity, obviously. Yes, there should, it should be not just diversity for its own sake, which I would agree. It should not be diversity for its own sake, obviously. So, yeah, these stories are supposed to be about these characters who are being too, pretty much uh, de demonized, I guess you can say. If I'm pronouncing that right. By the public, that's really terrifying over them. So, the message here was that of of acceptance, of course, and go against bullying. These stories will have room for, like, everyone, regardless of this race, gender, so on and so forth, of course. And the things they, of course, have to teach about so on things, of course. Anyway, I could go on for this, but, but I feel like I'm repeating myself here. Anyway, as always, thanks for watching, and take care. Until next time. To see you next time. See you, whatever.